elevate you know the game of the other guys around him. So um, hopefully he, uh, he keeps working through this process so we can get him back on the field soon. What, uh, what went into the decision to go with quarter A late on, on Sunday? Yeah, yeah, obviously, you know, we had some things going on on the field and, and just felt like it was time for a different look. Um, you, you know, um, you know, they were going at, at Tory a little bit, um, and we were trying to work some different coverages to help him out. And um, you know, Tory was battling, so it wasn't anything like that, but just felt like it was time to put something else out there, something different look, you know, a little different body type, um, you know, a little different uh, different skill set for Tank. So just uh, sort of try to change some pitches up to, to give them a different look. What, what does the what does Tankersley have to do to regain coaching staff's confidence? I don't. I wouldn't say he doesn't have our confidence. I mean, I think it's just like any, any, any of the rest of them. You know, any, any of our guys that are sort of in in backup type roles um, at this point. I mean, they just got to keep competing, keep you know working. To, you know, in practice, I actually think Tanks probably had two two. His last probably week and a half is probably the last two weeks of practice. Probably been in the best. You know, I've seen him really working in practice, just on the look team. But you know, we're playing some. Some teams that have you know play some similar techniques on defense and things, so he's able to work some of our stuff. So um, just like the rest of those guys, I mean, they just got to keep competing. And, and then when you know when they do have an opportunity, um, which obviously he got an opportunity to you know perform when he has a chance to perform, and 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 to keep doing that. All we ask those guys, you know, any of those backup you know guys that are right now are in, in a backup role, and we tell them all, hey, look, obviously all of them have to be ready to play. So we tell them to keep working, you know keep doing uh, you know what we're asking him to do and, and when they have the opportunity to perform so uh, I wouldn't say he doesn't have our confidence he's you know we felt like we had some other guys that were were performing better at those spots at the time we made those decisions and um, he's just got to keep himself ready and keep working to get back to where he needs to be when you see uh, Albert Wilson on the offense you've obviously faced him quite a bit in the practice field mm -hmm. uh, when you see his elusiveness on the field mm -hmm. is there anyone any opponent that you think of that's in that caliber guys that you have to deal with during the season? Yeah, I don't know, I'll go week to week. You want to talk about this week? Yeah, is there anyone on the line? Sure, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's a pretty fair comparison, you know, to uh, to Tate. Um, just from, pro they're probably fairly similar in size. Um, I've actually never gone against uh, Golden Tate. Obviously, you know, Tony and, and some of the guys on staff have been around him a lot more. Um, but just the run after catch stuff, the elusiveness, uh, you know, the ball in their hands and the things they can do. Um, you know, we went against Albert last year. I remember, I remember when we were playing Kansas City or prepping for Kansas City, and obviously, you know, most of their offense was going through, not forget the running back part, but, you know, 1087 were getting the majority of their, you know, their offense last year in Kansas City. And I remember watching tape and like, hey, man, this guy, like, we can't sleep on this dude just watching – and it was Albert, but just watching him do some of the things he was doing, I remember, I remember saying that in the thing, like, look, like I know, like everyone's focusing on on ten and eighty seven, but this this number twelve is is the real deal. So, um, you know, so I remember having that feeling about watching him prepping for him last year. So, um, but yeah, I mean, looking at, looking to this week, I mean, they do a lot of similar things. Again, they're moving Tate around, trying to get him the ball in different spots, like we do, you know, with with Albert and and. Um, Probably the best aspect of both their games is with the ball in their hands and what they can do with it. So, um, you know, it was a challenge for us this week for sure. When you, what would you like to see happen on that 29 yard touchdown where I, so there was a blitz mm -hmm. and um, McMillan got back mm -hmm. and you had um, TJ in the back too? Mm -hmm. Well, what, what's supposed to happen? Uh, I'm probably supposed to make a better, better. call. Right there, so we'll start there. You know, I just I knew I, I knew what the play was going to be. Um, I kind of made an inelegant call. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, you know, ball was on the thirty yard line, the twenty nine yard line. Um, obviously, about th three minutes left in the game. Uh, you know, I was part thinking. You know, just. From everything they've shown, like they were going to max protect and, and take a shot there. I mean, that was what they were going to do. I mean, it was, it was pretty evident. Um, you know, they changed their max protection scheme. I, mean, I don't want to get to too much detail stuff, but they changed their max protection scheme. Basically, like I tried to throw numbers at it. You know, I just tried to bring more than, you know, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't like a schemed up thing where I thought we could attack it. I just tried to bring enough numbers to try to muddy it up. You know what I mean? And it. And it 
that's not really my style, to be honest with you. It didn't really work very well. So, um, you know, it's kind of, I was in a tough situation. I thought, you know, like, you play coverage there, even if it's incomplete, they're in field goal range again with three minutes left. I mean, we're trying to keep points off the board there as best as possible. They're right in the fringe. You're trying to make it harder, you know, on a field goal kick. Um, you know, so it wasn't the it wasn't the right call. I won't say it was a the raw like a bad call necessarily. I mean, it wasn't the right call in hindsight. Um, you know, Bake had get, gotten taken off because um, his contact came out. I mean, the stuff that people don't see all the time. They thought it was he was playing with his eye. They thought the spotter called him down for a concussion check because he saw Bake playing with his, his contact fell out. <laughs> so he got taken off the field. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff going on. You know, in real time. So. I just tried to throw numbers at the situation, and it was probably not the right right call at that time. So, I'd like to I'd like to see myself make a better call. How's that? Is, are you expecting the linebacker to run back there? Uh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I, sh- I I I shouldn't have made that call. It was not it was the wrong call. That's that's on me. Um, again, I, I I'd like to put my you know I'd like to make a better call in that spot. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I always try to review myself and what I do. I think the, I wasn't questioning my philosophy, you know, in terms of trying to like be aggressive and try to knock them back a little bit and challenge the field goal spot. Um, but it wasn't the right pressure to do in that moment. So how's that? That's my answer. Uh, you guys are ranked, I think, 25th in defensive snaps. Um, I don't know. What is that? Like a number of snaps? Yeah, I think it's 67 or 68 a game, something like that. Is that too high? And is that how do, you, how do you manage the course of the season if you're if you're playing more snaps than everybody yeah. else? I mean, I don't I play as many snaps they tell us to. I mean, hopefully we're not playing full 70 minute games. You know what I mean? I'm sure that doesn't help. And um, you know, I think it's it's well documented. Our our you know our third down kind of we've been struggling a little bit on third down in some situations. And again. Same as last week. I don't know how many third and ones we had. I like couldn't get off the third and ones. It was driving me crazy. So, um, you know, that's it's partly our fault, you know, in terms of that stuff. But we can't, again, you know, I, I don't necessarily worry about that, like, in the moment. Like, we're going to play as many snaps as we need to play to win a ball game, you know. So if that's, you know, last week, it, I felt like more last week. We actually played 70, 70 snaps maybe or something like that, not including the penalties. You take those off. And we're actually in the high 60s, which – I mean, I would, I would expect, I, I, anticipate, I always expect to play in the sort of the mid 60s. Like that's to me not, not an unusual number of games. So, um, you know, again, we, we try to keep our guys fresh. You know, we try to do things during the course of the week and practice and, and recovery stuff to keep them ready to go. And I don't know, that's, it's not totally out of my our hands. You know, in terms of like trying to get stops and get off the field a little bit quicker and get some more three and outs. But I don't know. We don't really worry about. I, don't, I couldn't have told you that stat if you asked me a million times. Yeah, We're just trying to play as many plays as we can. What's your <laughs> thoughts, I guess, on total defense as a stat, like yardage? I don't really care about it, to be honest with you. Again, I was, our job is to keep points off the board, yeah. period. And that's, that's, our, that's our only goal. Now, again, you can, you can argue or just debate about which stats you think lead more directly to keeping points off the board. You know, for us, it's all about getting stops. You know, I think we've been pretty good in, in obviously in terms of takeaways and then red zone defense has been pretty good. Um, third downs is, you know, another way to get stops, which is where we're kind of, we're not kind of up to snuff there. So um, total yards, I mean, I, you know, again, that, I'm not saying we want to be giving up 500 yards every game. I mean, it's, but that's not really a stat that we try to measure ourselves by. We, we're, we're trying to keep the scoring down. So however we have to do that is what we're going to do. So like that's changed, I guess, as offenses have evolved and Picking up easy yardage versus, you know, maybe how it was 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously everything's evolving. Offenses are changing. And, um, you know, I, I, again, I don't really look at statistically around the league, but I'm sure like offensive numbers and just total yardage is going up. I mean, it's, it's getting hard to play defense sometimes. But, um, but again, I don't, that's not something that we like focus on. Like, hey, we got to hold them to under 300 yards here. Like, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to get off the field, we're trying to keep the score down. So, you know the things that we think lead to to lower scoring games are what we're going to focus on. And yards isn't necessarily one of them. Obviously, everything seems to be slanted towards the offense in terms yeah. of the new rules. Mm-hmm. This is just the reality of the situation. It is. But if you're as a defensive guy, as a defensive coach, mm-hmm. if you can advocate for one thing to help the defense, you know, 
maybe no cut blocking. What, say, yeah. For whatever reason, safety issues, what would it be? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's always those you're debates. The, the, the fault, the, oh, yeah, no, no one's going to listen to me anyways. I don't, you know, I don't know about that. But no, I, you know, I just, you know, you know you're always, it's, it's frustrating sometimes. I mean, it is, but, you know, I, I know that's just the way it is. I mean, I, you know, I, I try to take the, that approach with our guys. You know, hey, look, we can complain about, what, even, you know, landing on the quarterback, like hits, you know, legal hits with the head, all, all that stuff they're trying to change. And you can say it's slanted. I mean, some of it's player safety issues. But, you know, honestly, I really try to take the approach. Like at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter what I think. I mean, my, my I mean, yeah, as a defensive coach, my NFL might look a little different than, than the NFL we have today. But, you know, th that's the that's the state of the union like those are facts so for me it's more about okay how can we coach within this world how can we play defense or be better within the context of the new world order we're facing essentially you know so yeah i can come up with a lot of rules that says we can grab guys downfield i mean even even though obviously like college football contact rules and things like that i mean um but that's just that's just you know but even that's now, just, it, it has to bother you when, like... Nothing, nothing bothers me. Nothing. Yeah. Where running backs can lower their heads and... and well, they're not supposed to they're be able supposed to. They're not supposed to, but they do it. Yeah, but that's, again, that... Receivers can push off. Yeah, quarterbacks well, they're not supposed to. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, again, so... Any time, like, even, you know, for me, like, when we... When we have like penalties or, or plays that we... That happen within a game that we turn in, say, for example, to league, for me, it's never about, like... Punitive. I don't like you guys screwed up. Tell everybody that you're wrong. You know, it's more like, hey, is this? Am I coaching the right thing? Are we telling our like, is this what you want? You know what I mean. So I, for me, it's more about just informational. I, I, like, that's all sour grape stuff. That's fine. Like, that's just again, that's the way of the world. They're gonna call more DPI than OPI. Like, that's that's just how it is. You know, what I mean, they're gonna call more defensive players for striking with the helmet or leading with the helmet than offensive players. That's just that's just facts. I mean, that's okay. I mean, that's what the league wants or that's what the, the owners want or whatever it is, whoever wants those those changes. So for us to, to as a coaching staff, it's about, OK, how do we coach within the context of that world? You know what I mean? So I, I just want to know, OK, like you, you know, we're telling we're, this is what we're telling our guys now. You're, we're telling them to do this. So this happens in a game and you call this penalty or don't call this penalty. Was that right or wrong? So I can keep coaching it that way or no, do I have to? readjust what we're telling our players so again because our job to me is not to worry about what the rules are it's, I'm not I'm not that high up in the world so you know our job is to say tell me what I can coach our players to do to be successful as successful as we can be with within the context of what's going on in the league so, so I don't I try not to like bother myself too much with that because you can drive yourself crazy you really can and maybe in the off season when I have more time I float around and go oh, this would be cool if they changed this or if they did this but Right now, really, honestly, it's more about kind of information gathering and saying, hey, look, I want to make sure uh, this is how I'm coaching this guy. Is that, is that right? You know, and, or, or you told me you were going to call the penalty this way, but you didn't. Not like you screwed up, but hey, am I on the, are we on the right path here in, in terms of what we're telling our guys? So we've just got to take what the rules are at this point and, and try to coach as best we can within them. When, what's that, I think? Do you, you go like a oh. six, six in red zone defense? Yeah, you're like my PR guy, maybe. Yeah, that's a good one, though. That's, that's, that's not, not bad. bad. Yeah. We, we, yeah. What, I mean, the turnovers seem to be mm -hmm. pretty rare. That helps. Get, yeah. I mean, what is, what's going on there? I'm the, getting turnovers in the okay. red zone. I mean, is there been, I'm, I, I know we talked about the all season, but a concerted effort to get more turnovers. Yeah, no, I, again, listen, turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. I mean, yeah, yeah. in terms of our red zone defense, it's been helping. Like, you know, we, we've, we've been opportunistic as a defense. You know, we've kind of, I mean, we have a pretty high number of, of takeaways in general, but they've kind of come at good spots and kind of, like I said, in sort of fortunate instances, obviously having a bunch down as, it, as teams are close in the red zone and completely taking points off the board, even forget just holding teams to field goals and stuff like that once they get down there. So, again, you know, our, you know, our philosophy is just we're trying to get population of the ball. The more, the more hats are on the ball, the more guys are getting around, you know, getting, you're getting hands on balls, the guys are getting tips up, and the guys that are running to it. I mean, if you look at, you know, if you look at that second, uh, the second fumble right at the end of the game where Kiko uh, knocked the one out that X recovered, um, you know, we got about eight guys in the picture there. You know, and it's, it's the 60, 
whatever the play, whatever your other stat was, and it's late in the game, and, and we've got eight or nine guys running to the ball. And if you look at both our fumble recoveries from last game, the first guy in didn't recover them. Both times the first guy in kind of had in his hands and it bobbled out. Um, and kind of the next guy in, in kind of fell on the ball or, or scooped it up, you know what I mean? So some of that's random, but again, just the emphasis on, on getting hats the ball in terms of attacking it and punching it and popping up in the air, and then also population to run the ball again, trying to help our tackling. You know what I mean? If one guy misses, we got guys there. And then if a ball does pop out, we, we've got multiple opportunities to, to try to recover it. So, I mean, you know, hope, hopefully that some of those things that we're coaching are starting to show up a little bit. Get population to the ball. Population to the ball. ball, yeah. Get to the ball. That before. Yeah, that's what we so, tell them. It seems, it seems like uh, with mm -hmm. X teams are avoiding throwing him the ball the last couple of weeks. What role mm -hmm. have you seen him still play, even though you know he may not be getting the action? I thought I thought X played his most physical game of the year uh, on Sunday. Uh, if you look at the uh, fourth and one play that that early in the game that twenty makes. Um, X sets the edge. I mean, they're, they're running a little flip play on a toss, and, and the tackle's pulling out, and X goes and knifes the, knifes the offensive tackle and sets the edge of the numbers and allows 20 to run the alley to make that play. You know, obviously had a big play on the screen, uh, had some, you know, was getting his hands on some guys. So that was cool for me to see. I thought he took a big step. It was his most physical game by far, and he was really, you know, helping in some ways like that that maybe weren't, you know, available to the public eye. When you have him shadow. Uh -oh. he said he's going to get mad at oh, you guys. Now you're good. Let's go. Have, Let's go. I'm fine. She has to transcribe all these. That's why she gets mad. <laughs> she gets mad at you. There are pros and cons of having them shadow. Now when you have them shadow, mm -hmm. the other guy became, became a target. Mm -hmm. Is there a balancing act? There is. There always is. Again, you know, even, you know, sometimes, you know, you shadow a guy and, you know, so for X, say, like, okay, I'm covering Omar, so I know – I study him. I know his ins and outs. I know what's going on. While the other guy has to study three different receivers because it may not be the same guy he's matched up on across the ball. You know what I mean? So, like, sometimes that's even harder for the other guy to say, yeah, you're, you're locked in on this guy and you know his tendencies and you see kind of his nuances, but the other guy's got to – there might be two or three other receivers that he's faced up against, you know what I mean, or – Put, you know, he may have him in different spots and those sort of things. So, yeah, there's always that balance that like we talked about a couple weeks ago. I mean, we, all that goes into making that decision. It's not just, yeah, hey, put him on the best guy and that's cool, we're done. But there's sort of a ripple effect on everything else that's going on for sure. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks.